daily newspaper analysis, which is brought to you by Law Seco. I hope that you're all doing fine and great. Let's see what do we have for our discussion today. So we have an editorial that we have taken from the Hindu newspaper. The title of this is Taking Steps to Ensure Sex Workers' Rights. So we have almost discussed a similar article previously as well, but this is a little bit more of in detail. Let's see what we'll have over here. Then we have news update and legal news for the day. So this article talks about that recently in the case of Buddhadev Karmaskar, the Supreme Court has held that the sex workers and their children could not be robbed of their right to live with basic human dignity and human decency. I hope that you all know that which article, basically also fundamental right of the Constitution of India, entails about right to life and also right to live with basic human dignity. If you know so, pause the video right now and let me know in the comment section below that which particularly is this fundamental right. So the directions made by the Supreme Court in this regard are synonymous with the panel report which was made by a Supreme Court back in July 2011. Now, as we know that the rights about the prostitutes and their children, it has been into a news and also it has been discussed every now and then. I'm sure that you all must be reminded of the very famous movie Gangu Bai Now, wherein the motto of that particular movie was also to fight for the rights of the prostitute. So there were also, you know, a recommendation that uh, there was a report that was made by the Supreme Court back in July 2011. Let's see what was it about. So the government of India has stated that it has reservations with four out of 10 recommendations that have been made. So it says that the uh, Supreme Court has thus advised the government of India to implement the remaining recommendations and the provisions of the Immoral Traffic Prevention Act 1956. So the government of India said that uh, out of you know four out of the ten could not really be uh, implemented due to some kind of reservations, some kinds of limitations that the government had. But then the Supreme Court suggested the government that if not those four, at least they can move forward with the other provisions of or other recommendations of the report. Let's see that what were the recommendations. Firstly, to provide immediate medical attention to sex workers who are victims of sexual abuse. Secondly, release the adult sex workers detained in the ITPA protective homes. Thirdly, sensitize police and local authorities about rights of sex workers. And fourthly, ask the press council to issue guidelines to the media to not reveal the identity of sex workers when carrying out raids or rescue operations, keeping in mind their dignity and personal uh, you know, life as well. So while provisions under the CRPC, they do not talk about medical assist, they do talk about the medical assistance, sorry. Uh, the, re the revelation of identity had not been discussed or elaborated upon thus far. But now, of course, we have right to privacy as well being the fundamental right, which was brought forward by the case with the Swami case. So of course, now the identity of sex workers can very much be kept hidden. So the government has expressed reservations regarding the following. Let's see. Firstly, the police shall not take any criminal action against a sex worker. Now, of course, here, the expression prostitution is defined as sexual abuse under the ITPA. And thus, the sex workers, however, are not defined. So this actually brings about some kind of ambiguity. And then that police action, you know, should not be taken against the sex workers. It might not be easy for the government to implement because, of course, in India, still, prostitution has not been really, uh, you know, legal. Legalized. So uh, it won't be you know, very much possible to bring forward this change. Secondly, another recommendation is that the sex workers should not be harassed by raiding the brothels, which you know definitely should not be done, but it is uh, the harsh reality that it is done so. And the government will not have to decide whether two or more sex workers cohabiting is an offense or not. Thirdly, the reservation is that the, the child should not be separated from the mother merely because the mother is engaged in sex trade. However, in the case of Gaurav Jain versus Union of India of 1997, the Supreme Court had held that children of sex workers should not be living in the brothel. So definitely here, of course, a point of conflict can be seen that the recommendation said that the mother, you know, should not be, or the child should not be separated from the mother. But the Supreme Court judgment itself said that, you know, uh, the child should not be made to live in a brothel. So here, definitely, because of the conflict, there is a limitation on the implementation of this recommendation. And fourthly, and most important recommendation is to involve the sex workers in the decision making process, because no matter what, they also are the citizens of the country. And irrespective of what they do, they should be made part of the decision making process of the nation. So it is high time that the government acts on these recommendations since we have failed to prevent prostitution and sex workers need to be treated as victims of socioeconomic abuse rather than as offenders and inconsistencies in the law must be removed by to remedy this.
Now let's see what do we have for a news update for the day. Firstly, World Food Safety Day that is today on 7th June. World Food Safety Day is celebrated annually on 7th June to draw attention and mobilize action to prevent, detect and manage foodborne risks and improve human health. So WHO that is World Health Organization has announced the theme for this year's World Food Safety Day as safer food, better health and launches the campaign organizing to inspire global participation. Second, intermediate range ballistic missile Agni-4 has been successfully tested. So India successfully tested the intermediate range ballistic missile Agni-4, which met all parameters. So the missile, one of many in the Agni series of strategic missiles, has a range of over 3,500 kilometers. Now let's see what do we have for legal updates today. Firstly, magistrate cannot refer defamation complaints to police for investigation under section 156 clause 3 of CRPC, even if other offenses are also alleged, says the Karnataka High Court. The Karnataka High Court in the case of Divya and another versus state of Karnataka and another has stated that, uh, that, that bar under section 199 CRPC on magistrate from exercising powers under section 156 clause 3 of CRPC on a complaint involving offenses punishable under section 500 of the IPC, that is for the defamation, would be applicable even in cases where offenses are alleged for the other offenses, offenses in addition with uh, section 500 of IPC. So this was all for today. We hope you liked the session. If you did, please like it. Also, you may join our Telegram channel to uh, download the PDF of today's slides. Thank you so much. The link for the uh, Telegram channel, guys, is in the description box below. Thank you so much.